one particular method for inverting the z-transform is to write the function we wish to invert as a power series expansion. And the reason that this is effective is because the z-transform itself is a power series in z. We write x of z is equal to the sum from n equals minus infinity to infinity x of n z to the minus n. That's a power series. And it's useful to write out the individual terms in the power series to see how this is going to work. And let's start with n equals minus 2. We've got x of minus 2 z squared plus x of minus 1 z plus x of 0 times z to the 0 which is 1, plus x of 1, z inverse, plus x of 2, z to the minus 2, and so on. So what you can see is that if we can write x of z in this fashion as a power series, then all we have to do is pick off the coefficients for x of n from the corresponding power of z. So our approach is to first write our function to be inverted as a power series, and then we can pick off the coefficients x of n from what's in front of z raised to the minus n. So let's suppose I have an x of z here that is 2z to the fifth plus z cubed minus z squared plus 1 plus 3z inverse minus 4z to the minus 4. Well, this is the form of a power series. It's a finite power series. And we can pick off the coefficients as our values of x of n. In particular, this first coefficient here, 2, is on z to the fifth. Well, that's a coefficient associated with x of minus 5. And then in front of z to the cube, we have 1, so that's going to be x of minus 3. We have minus 1 in front of z squared, so that's x of minus 2. The coefficient of z to the 0 is 1, so that's going to be x of 0. And then 3 will correspond to x of 1. Minus 4 will correspond to x of 4. So I can write out x of n as 2 delta of n plus 5 plus delta of n plus 3 minus delta of n plus 2 plus delta of n plus 3 delta of n minus 1 minus 4 delta of n minus 4. Now one of the unique aspects of this power series expansion approach is that you can use it to invert transcendental functions of z. For example, if I take x of z as e to the power negative 2z inverse, well, I can write e to the x in terms of a power series, and we know that e to the x is the sum n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. So I can apply this power series expansion and replace x by negative 2z inverse to write that x of z is this particular power series, negative 2z inverse quantity to the nth power divided by n factorial, and that simplifies to negative 2 to the n divided by n factorial times z to the minus n. So the coefficient that's in front of z to the minus n is x of n, and that implies then that x of n is negative 2 to the n divided by n factorial, and we'll multiply by u of n to indicate that this holds when n is greater than 0, and it's 0 otherwise. So you can do things like logarithms or cosines and so on. You can invert them by using the power series expansion for the particular function at hand. Now the power series expansion approach can also be used to invert rational z-transforms by using long division. So for example, if I have x of z is 1 minus z inverse divided by 1 minus 1 half z inverse, and I assume that my region of convergence is a magnitude of z greater than 1 half, then I can do long division here to express this rational function as a power series. In this case, we know from the region of convergence that the right-sided inverse transform is the appropriate one, so we're going to expand our long division using powers of z inverse. And so I've got 1 minus z inverse, and what I'm dividing into that is 1 minus 1 half z inverse. So my first term is 1, and when I multiply by 1, I'm going to subtract and end up with minus 1 half z inverse. 
Well, to cancel this term out, I need to multiply 1 over here by minus 1 half z inverse. And then when I subtract again, I'm left with minus a quarter z to the minus 2. Well, to get rid of that term, I'm going to have to multiply my constant out here by minus 1 fourth z to the minus 2. And I'm left with, after the subtraction, minus 1 eighth z to the minus 3. So you continue this process to get my expression for the long division as a power series in terms of z inverse now. And from this power series, we can pick off the coefficients, and we see that x of 0 is 0 for n less than 0. It's 1 when n is equal to 0, minus a half when it's 1, minus a quarter when it's 2, minus an eighth when it's 3, and so on. In this particular case, we can actually see a pattern. And the pattern is that x of n is equal to 2 delta of n minus 1 half to the n u of n. In general, if these are higher order polynomials that we're dividing, it's going to be much more difficult to see a pattern and express this in closed form. For closed form expressions of rational functions, the method of partial fraction expansion is much more appropriate. Now, if this were a non-causal signal, in other words, if the region of convergence was magnitude of z less than 1 half, then I could get the non-causal expansion would be in terms of powers of z, not in powers of z inverse. And that can be accomplished by multiplying the numerator and the denominator both by z, doing my long division, with polynomials expressed in terms of positive powers of z. So the power series expansion is a method that can be used for some unique signals to obtain an inverse Z transform.